morning and morning. welcome to Rockledge Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Lord's Day. Glad you are able to be with us in person and from home through Facebook and YouTube. Glad we are able to be together. We are the welcoming church on the river and delighted to be with one another for worship this morning. If you're not currently receiving a bulletin that lists special announcements and prayer requests uh, and you would like to receive that bulletin, please let us know by calling the church office. We thank you for those of you who are here with us this morning. We thank you for keeping your mask on even while we sing. I know hopefully that uh, we will be able to sing uh, soon without them, but right now that's what we're doing, and so I appreciate uh, your willingness uh, to do that with us this morning. There are a few announcements I would uh, bring to your attention. The In Lieu of Flowers and Lily Collections are underway. The mission committee has chosen uh, mana bags uh, to be the donation this year. Uh, you may bring uh, particular offerings for that and place it in the box. Uh, please note in your bulletin the options uh, for, for those donated items, or you may give cash for the in lieu of flowers for Easter lilies this year. Uh, the adult Lenten study, which is the seven marks of vital congregations that the church is doing uh, for this season of Lent, is happening on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings. And I encourage you, <coughs> pardon me, to join one of those offerings. It is an opportunity, <coughs> pardon me, to um, to learn together about what a healthy congregation looks like and to have your input into um, uh, in helping our church increase its efforts uh, to be a healthy congregation. You may have ideas that would be helpful for us to implement. And so I uh, strongly encourage you to participate in one of those studies. We continue with our Tuesday evening service and our uh, Faith Formation Committee, or formerly known as Christian Education Committee, would like your support by volunteering and or donating plastic eggs and items to stuff in them in preparation for the extra egg extravaganza that is scheduled for Palm Sunny Sunday. Um, and they would like those donations in by March the 21st. We also have a, a, another men's group gathering coming up. That is Saturday, March the 13th at 9 a.m. in Calvin Hall. And we do ask that you let Alan know that you are planning to attend so that we can make sure we're within our limit of 20 people or less. <clears throat> There are several prayer requests, <clears throat> including we want to remember Liz following her hand surgery, and uh, uh, Jim tells me that his friend Bill is in need of prayer as well. <clears throat> we want to continue to remember Eric and George and Phil Sr. and Ginger and Abe and Pete and Sherry and Rick and Sylvia and Jeffrey, and Larry, and Max, and Dell, and Myers, and Bill, among many others who are on our hearts and minds this morning. I have some birthday wishes for this week. Uh, Scott celebrates a birthday this week. Caroline celebrates uh, a birthday this week. And another Caroline celebrates a birthday this week. So it is the week of birthdays and make sure that you either send them a card or call them and let them know that you're thinking of them this week. I'm not aware of any other announcements this morning, so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
in Christ to God, one another, and the world, let us stand, call ourselves to worship. Hear the promise of our Lord, our God. I will bless you and make you a blessing. Hear the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. And take up the cross and follow me. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is number 826, Lift High the Cross.
sein und so. Amen. The cleansing water of baptism, God's grace for you and for me. Those who trust in the Lord will have their strength renewed. They will rise up and sprout wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our response of praise, and notice it's a new one uh, this morning. We've sung it before, but it's different from the ones we have sung most recently. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to receive your word. Reveal to us the good news and enable us to trust in the promise of salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Two scripture readings today, both uh, from the New Testament, from the Christian scriptures, the first one from the Gospel of Mark. It is actually the lectionary text for today in this season of Lent. Mark 8, verses 31 through 38. <clears throat> then he began, now this is Jesus, then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And then our text in Matthew, which is part of our, one of the texts for our Bible Congregations Initiative. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. 
When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. And you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it, did not do it to one of the least of these. You did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord, it stands forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Are you sure? Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sometimes with some of the passages that we read, I'm a little hesitant to say, thanks be to God. <laughs> this passage gives me the willies because it sounds like Jesus is serious. It makes me nervous because there is no, the kingdom of God is like preceding this passage. There's none of that. No metaphors. Instead, bam, this is what it is. Judgment time when Jesus' glory and kingdom is complete. Matthew tells us earlier that no one knows the day or the hour, not even Jesus. So it could be any time, maybe even tomorrow. And there is no discussion of what we might hear in some popular culture books. Or movies, there is no discussion of rapture and some of us meeting Jesus in the air ahead of time. No serene. It is line up, everybody, and let us see who is righteous and who is not. Commentator Barbara Lundblad reminds us that this is the last of the teaching that Jesus does in the Gospel of Matthew. So it is important. Good teachers put the stuff you want people to remember at the end. So it sails with you out the door. So here it is. The last important teaching. We have heard before that righteousness in our scriptures has little to do with personal piety and whether you do certain practices. Instead, righteousness has everything to do with right living. 
And Jesus defines right living as loving God with all that you are and loving your neighbor as you love yourself, right? Well, just in case we pea brains cannot figure it out, if we can't remember or figure out what loving your neighbor means, and in case we did not pay attention to the Good Samaritan story, well, we get it spelled out clearly for us here. Loving your neighbor means feeding the hungry, giving clean water or water to the thirsty, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, welcoming the stranger, visiting the imprisoned. So this is the checklist for what it means to be a sheep and not a goat in the eyes of Jesus. And no one, I don't think, no one wants to be the eternal punishment goat. I don't want to be that. <laughs> I readily admit that this passage is not easy to hear because it gives us a clear picture of what's important to Jesus and frankly, we would rather do and listen to something else because it is often uncomfortable doing these things. I do not know why we are surprised by the passage, though. All through the Gospel of Matthew that we read this past year, we heard Jesus express concern for those who are marginalized, for the poor, the grieving, the stranger, we heard him teach in parables that left us with more questions than answers about what and who God honors. We heard Jesus declare his disciples to be salt and light in the world, insisting they flavor the world good and color the world with compassion. His disciples were and are to follow Jesus and his example. And beyond what he said, how did Jesus spend his time in ministry while he was on this earth? Did he spend all his time in the synagogue teaching and preaching? Did he start a capital campaign to fund a new Christian life center? Did he form a committee to update and renovate the parlor? You know, <laughs> I have a hard time even picturing that. While he did spend some time in the synagogue and temple teaching, he did do that. Most of his time, though, was spent outside the walls of the religious institution, doing ministry in the streets and in the homes of the communities he visited. He healed those who were sick. He fed those who were hungry. Sometimes he got himself into trouble for that. He welcomed the stranger by having conversation with them. He definitely got in trouble for that. Remember the Samaritan woman at the well from last week's sermon? He welcomed her and had conversation with her where she was, which was in Samaria at the well. And remember the character Zacchaeus, a tax collector, not a good person, also short, and had to climb a tree so that he could see Jesus. Jesus welcomed him by calling him down and saying, I want to have a conversation with you. Let's go eat at your house. The disciples we learn in Acts, Acts of the Apostles, will follow his lead, Jesus' lead, and also spend little time in the synagogue before going out into the streets to meet people where they are. Their focus was an outward one in which they brought healing, food, welcome, good news, which means salvation, and hope to people. So they learned 
from Jesus and did the same. For the past two weeks in our Bible studies and in the sermons, we've been talking about the characteristics or the marks of a healthy congregation. The first week we heard that lifelong discipleship formation is a characteristic of healthy congregations. Formation is stronger than mere head knowledge in that it shapes and forms our faith and our activities our whole life long so that we can be the people that Christ calls us to be. Like clay, intentional discipleship formation is a lifelong shaping process that brings Christ alive in us. Last week, we heard from Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well that intentional, authentic evangelism is also important as we seek to tell others our faith story. We must be willing to share with others why Christ is the answer, how his saving grace makes all the difference for us right here and right now not later in heaven, but right here. Christ makes a difference for us right here and right now. Intentional, authentic evangelism. This week, the characteristic that helps us to define a vital congregation is an outward incarnational focus, moving outside of these walls to bring salt and light to the world around us. We know what outward means, and we know what focus means, right? But some of us may have difficulty with the word incarnational. What does that mean? We remember that Jesus is God incarnate from the first chapter of John's Gospel, which means when we look at Jesus, we Christians see a fuller expression of who God is and what is important to God. In other words, what God looks like when we look at Jesus. Jesus embodies, has enfleshed the purpose and intention of God. So if we have an outward, incarnational focus, our primary purpose for being our focus is to take Jesus outside of these walls. In other words, to enflesh Jesus. And what does that look like? I'm glad you asked. Matthew 25 tells us we are to feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, Welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, heal the sick, and visit the imprisoned. And these are not metaphors. We are to actually care for people who are in this circumstance, in these different circumstances. On Wednesday night, and during the adult Sunday school class this morning, we watched a video by Ann Oden, who talks about this passage as an instruction to provide hospitality. All of these things are hospitality that Jesus talks about. Hospitality is important to the Jewish community and to the early Christian community because it communicates welcome, care, compassion to the stranger. Feeding someone who is hungry demonstrates hospitality. Odin says there is a movement to the kind of care and compassion that is hospitality, whether it's feeding someone or visiting someone who is in prison or, or um, providing refuge to someone, providing water to someone. There is a movement to hospitality 
She relates that it begins with a greeting. They're going out to welcome someone. It's kind of like an activity that we might choose to do in this day and age in which some youth or adult group does a prayer walk in the church's neighborhood. The greeting could be um, a prayer walk in our neighborhood. The activity includes getting together <clears throat> and baking some cookies while others write, write notes of blessing. And then the group takes the cookies and the blessings into the neighborhood to give to anyone they see. That's a prayer walk. Greeting in the name of Christ is a movement of hospitality. The second movement that Odin talks about is, a, is restoration, in which the church helps with basic needs like hunger, providing clean drinking water, clothing, etc. The early Christians would wash one another's feet as a practice of hospitality. They would provide food both to the people and to the animals who brought them. They would extend their social capital by offering to introduce them to people further up the line of their journey. They would offer to introduce them to local resources. Restoration goes beyond a greeting to help people, to help meet the needs of people. As an illustration of this movement, restoration, I think of those churches today who assist refugees and immigrants by helping them find doctors and lawyers, food, and clothing while they navigate the cumbersome immigration system in our country. It's just one example of restoration. The third movement of hospitality, according to Odin, is dwelling together. So first we greet people, second we are involved in restoration, and the third movement of hospitality is dwelling together. Now, I'm not talking about a commune in which we all pool our resources, although that could be one option. That is the movement in which you really spend time with those who have needs. Get to know them well and hear their story. Give them dignity. You share meals together. Your children play together. You worship together. Perhaps an illustration of this movement dwelling together might be those churches that house those folks who participate in family promise. A homeless, which is a homeless families who are working through their issues to be self-sufficient again and different churches volunteer to house them for a week at a time and participate in that process, family promise. That might be an illustration of what it means to dwell together as a hospitality movement. It might also be a sustained relationship with the special gathering folks in which they get to know you well and you become a second family to them. The last movement of hospitality that Odin offers is the movement of sending forth she relates that early Christian hospitality was not intended to create sustained dependence. Did you hear me? The early Christian hospitality was not intended to create sustained dependence, but to give people the resources and tools they need to be self-sufficient and to send them further on their journey. Letters of introduction might be given, prayers, etc., to help people continue on their journey. Today, that might look like letters of reference and maybe a sending celebration. Outward, incarnational focus is a movement of hospitality. It's not just inviting your friends into your home. Hospitality is sharing the care and compassion of Christ by assisting with the needs of the community around us. 
a number of us are already doing this individually. Whether it's working with the Brevard County Food Distribution Programs, or working with the Sharing Center, or delivering meals on wheels, or taking food to the homeless under the bridge, or participating in the Gleaning Program, or matching rehabilitated horses to develop mentally challenged kids, or taking mana bags to give away to those in need. There are a variety of things you are doing individually to provide hospitality. I suspect there are others of you providing hospitality of which I am just plain not aware. But what about our communal efforts? What are they? As a church, have we lately taken on a project to be the hands and feet of Christ? I know we financially support missions, and that is a good thing. And what else, though? What are we uniquely positioned, given our demographics? What are we uniquely positioned to do for incarnational ministry? Could it be some sort of feeding ministry? Could it be something to do with a special gathering that we already financially support? Could it be some sort of partnership with a struggling small African American church in which they get to dictate what kind of help they need from us? Could it be a deep dive into the problematic issue of race relations and understand more clearly the privileges afforded to you and me that are still not given to our black brothers and sisters in Christ? Could it be a deep dive into that? What could we do communally to demonstrate the love and care of Christ to our neighbors? It seems like what I read in the Matthew passage that hands-on mission is not optional. Ooh. Or when we feel like it, or when we finally have our life together so we can actually do something for someone else, hands-on mission is not an option. This is, that is a surefire way to be called a goat. really interesting thing is the people we are hospitable to, especially the ones who are hungry, thirsty, sick, naked, sojourning, and imprisoned, are Jesus himself. That's really interesting. They may not look what we imagine Jesus to look like, but they are him according to this passage. So where is Jesus in our midst? And how can we welcome him? Come on, sheep. <laughs> Give me some ideas. David mentioned an idea to me even this morning about possibly being a church that can hold a center for inoculations, especially to those people in the community who don't have other options, as a number of us have not, and there are lots more who have not had an option. I'd love for someone to do some investigation. That's just one idea. I know there are others. Come on, sheep, give me some ideas. Is it risky? You bet. But isn't the greater risk to ignore Jesus hurting right in front of us and then have to endure eternal punishment? Isn't that a great risk? I don't know about you, but that gives me the voice. It makes me nervous. Amen.
let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and said that the right
Holy God, all that we have and all that we are are blessings from you. Please help us to treat our lives, our gifts, our blessings as just that, gifts from you, and help us give back. Please use these gifts, your tithes, to accomplish your will and purpose in this place at this time. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, make us a reflection of your love. We ask you to call us into new places of service and growth. And we ask you to fill us with courage to open our doors a bit wider and reach out still further than what makes us comfortable. Strengthen this church to bear love into difficult situations and find common concern with those we often overlook. Teach our hearts to seek out those whom we push to the margins of our lives so that we might be the salt and light you call us to be. Forgive our mistakes and help us to do better, beginning right now. Help us to deny what is comfortable and take up the cross to bear your love and light to a world that is crooked. We are especially mindful today of all those in the Rockledge and Cocoa area who are struggling for food and adequate nutrition, who are struggling to get their vaccines. Help us be part of the solution, we pray. We also remember today those in our midst who are struggling with illness and recovery. We live to you, Phil Sr., Abe and Ginger. We lift to you Liz and Sylvia, Eric, George. We lift to you Jim's friend Bill and the many others on our hearts and minds this day. May your healing presence be with each one, giving comfort, hope, and the sure promise of your presence. We also pray for our nation and its leaders. May your spirit guide their decision making to provide what is best for all rather than just for some. Strengthen those who are on the right track according to your will and silence those whose intent is only for self-gain or evil. Now hear us as we pray the prayer we have been taught saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our sending hymn, please stand, is We Will Walk With God. Uh, we have sung it before. Uh, should we have uh, Rob play it through once? Okay, and then we'll sing it twice.
I wish you could see what I see, which is the uh, celebration that goes on in our balcony when we sing. <laughs> go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and as you go, may you know the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship, the energy, the dancing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.